Whether you're looking for a serious relationship or just a bit of fun, the dating world can be a tough to navigate. And I've heard this from the audience as well. So here with a roundup of trends that will influence dating in the year ahead is Dr. Jess O'Reilly. So good to have you, gorgeous. Happy to be here. Talking so dating. happy to have you. Yeah, so how is the dating landscape changing? Well, number one, nobody's ever going to say it's good. Right? Yeah. If you talk to anyone no. who's dating, they're like, it is the worst. Right. But I think that with some of the trends that we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. what you'll see is that there are more options than ever. And so mm. I think we need to take it on ourselves to eat from the dating buffet. Eat exactly yeah. according to your taste. Try a little bit of everything. Yes. And then figure out what works for you without having to eat what everybody else is eating. Okay, well, as soon as you call it a buffet, I'm in. You're in. <laughs> yes, I am invested. So we're hearing about NATO dating. NATO makes me think of geopolitics, but I don't think that's what we're talking about. What does this mean? Thank goodness, no. So we're talking about not attached to outcome dating. So the mm. idea of dating for the experience, being more present and in the moment, not running through a checklist of whether or not this mm. person meets your standards, but just seeing where it goes. Maybe it leads to something casual. Maybe it leads to a friendship. Maybe it leads to a long-term relationship. So yeah. this isn't for everybody, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm seeing this kind of led by two cohorts. And there's like two cohorts that are strong in the dating scene right now. Yeah. People post-divorce who just want to kind of try it out and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And then younger folks who maybe don't feel the pressure of a timeline. And I love this dating style because it takes you away from the escalator of feeling as though I must get from this to that to the next, move yeah. in together, have kids. All those things. So at least you don't have that expectation, which maybe might make your dates better. Like, I would be terrible at this. Okay. I already know that. But what do you think, audience? Would you do the NATO dating? Do you think a yay or a nay? Yep, lots of thumbs up out okay. there. Oh. Um, good. I, listen, I love it for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not who I am. Yeah. Okay, talk to us a little bit about throwback dating. Throwback dating. So I think we're all seeing this. People who maybe have gotten back together with an old high school friend, mm -hmm. maybe a fling, maybe the person who took you to prom who was just a friend at the time. Yeah. And so I love this. And I, I, I'm thinking of dozens of couples who have reconnected after 20, 30 years. And it's so cool because you often share an old network. You have history. You were already friends and you yes. know a little bit about each other. You might know one another's families. And we have research showing in friendships that it can be very hard to make a new friend. It takes hundreds of hours to make a close friend. And so we often encourage people to try and reconnect with old friends. And this isn't about going back to exes, but yeah. I think there's value in reconnecting with people from your past. I think oh everybody gosh. knows somebody, Why right? not go back to exes? Is that wrong? <sighs> okay. It's not what if you've grown and evolved and you're different people? Perhaps. But <laughs> oftentimes what we see is people get into this thing that we call cycling, oh. where you break up, get back together, break up, get back together. Yes. If it works for you, Yes. do it, but generally cycling has a negative psychological toll on folks. I could see that. Okay, throwback dating. What do y'all think of throwback dating? Oh, you're oh, giving it a big thumbs, thumbs down! down. It's not experience. Oh, I wonder if there's a story there. We'll be talking during the break. <laughs> it seems like a good thing. Next up, we have L-A-B-T. What does this stand oh, for? All right, and beautiful acronym, LAPT. Lab left living apart but together and this oh. is definitely driven by many people post-divorce and specifically hetero women mm. who don't want to be just a purse or a nurse they don't mm. want another person to take care of <laughs> in their home and they are saying I want the love I want the pleasure I want the connection I want all the fruits of the relationship but I don't need one more person living in my house so <laughs> they are living apart but together yeah I love the sounds of that <laughs> we went to Disneyland with City Line last year and Mickey and Minnie have separate residences residences <laughs> with a connecting walkway I was like I see how this might work they've got the money for it they've got right? the money for it <laughs> okay yay or nay what do we think of L-A-B-T yes a lot of yes out there oh but one very big no yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I do like a body you know to keep you me warm are. at night yeah, well, I, I would think that you would have sleepovers. Sure, yeah. Right? Especially yeah. if, if you, you have the Mickey Minnie first. thing. You ask your parents first. <laughs> <laughs> the kids can shuffle back and forth. Like, it'd be awesome. Okay, more people uh, shifting away from monogamy. I hear a lot about this now. So talk to us about this trend. Yeah, so when we talk about CNM or ENM, meaning mm -hmm. consensual non-monogamy non -monogamy or mm -hmm. ethical non-monogamy, 
we're, we're not necessarily seeing a rise in it. I think what we're seeing is more openness to it, talking about it. Yeah. And so whereas before maybe people were doing things that weren't so ethical, that weren't so consensual, mm. we're seeing now that a nationally representative survey or study in Canada found that 12% of Canadians consider some sort of an open relationship style, but ethical and consensual, their yeah. ideal format, one-fifth have tried it. So 20% oh, wow. of people. So this is more common than we realize. It definitely elicits some response from people, but I think yeah. it's important to note that we have early data showing that the relationship outcomes are similar regardless of whether you're monogamous or ethically non-monogamous. And I'm curious oh. what the audience has to say here. You probably have to have major communication if you're in an ethical non-monogamous relationship because you're constantly going back and forth checking on the rules and exactly. the, you know what I mean? The way it flows. Yeah, it's not just a free-for-all. It's not a free-for-all. There's mostly just talking and talking and talking and actually I think those folks in monogamous relationships can learn from that. Absolutely. So what do we think of non-monogamy? Ethical non-monogamy. I'm, oh, I'm with you. Oh, <laughs> yes to the brave souls. A little bit, yeah, a little bit of yes, Even but mostly no. Even if it's not no. for you, right? It might be then for yes, other people. for other people. Yeah. Yes, whatever if works for you. If you have the time and the energy and the finances yes. and the resources. And if that's the thing that's going to make you the happiest, please do it. Like, Absolutely. please pursue that life. Okay, screening out another big trend okay so this is pretty simple this is making sure that we date people who are aligned with us politically and so we already mm. see the dating apps offer badges so that you can indicate whether you voted you can indicate political party on some of them mm -hmm. and this may seem like oh we're just trying to create a silo of people who have everything in common but when we think about values this is a really big one especially if you're part of a group who is very adversely affected from different political outcomes so right yeah this is a big one I know that you mentioned it could potentially be unsafe for you to be dating someone with certain philosophical views so it make it makes perfect sense to me I mean I want a full checklist I want to do an interview if I was out <laughs> on the dating scene again I would be insufferable right and it'd be like who'd you vote for why'd you vote for them what are the reasons what's your tax bracket how do you feel about Ooh. this ba -ba -da, da -ba -da. like I want to know everything I want to know who you donate to I would want to know the whole nine. Oh my goodness what do you guys think of screening yeah. for like politics and what have you yes right. yeah so it's you can disagree kind of on important. pineapple and pizza you can disagree on you know different things how much time you spend yeah. together you can have different f family values to some degree yes but some of these issues are They're so big. tied to who we are on the inside absolutely politics is personal absolutely. right just thank you so much for that nice we, to see you dating so exciting it's always good to see